college football. I've been watching it for 40 years. Are you kidding me? You're listening to Winning Cures Everything. Game day, baby. Wake up or get out. Here's your host. A confident young man. A superb athlete. Gary Seegers. Welcome in, Winning Cures Everything. It is Thursday, November 10th. That's right, uh, did not get to do a show on November the 9th. Uh, but we are here now. Everything is good. We're ready to rock and roll. It's been a really crazy week uh, as far as my schedule is concerned. So we're not going to waste a lot of time. We're going to get right into the games. I think we might do two shows today. A little bit of a shorter one later, of course, for our Week 10, or excuse me, Week 11 preview. Um... But yes, we, we got a lot of things that we're going to discuss. Let me go in and start off by telling you that winning here is everything. One, I'm your host, Gary Seegers, at GaryWCE on Twitter. Two, the show is brought to you by BetUS. It's America's premier online sports book. It's America's favorite sports book since 1994. Yeah, that's right. They've been doing this for quite some time. Uh, go and check them out. BetUS.com. Everything that you would like to gamble on, sports-wise, will be over there. They are fantastic. They have always treated me well. They will treat you well also. Now... Uh, I host the BetUS College Football Show. If you want my official plays on the week, you got to go check out that show. It's every Tuesday and Wednesday, 1 p.m. Eastern Time. You can find it over at BetUSTV.com, or there's a link in the description down below. Go ahead and check that. If you are watching this right now, go ahead and like the video for me, please, and make sure that you are subscribed to the channel. Uh, we are still attempting to grow. We hit our goal of 7,500 for the season, but, uh, but we want to keep that thing going. So I, I've got another goal now. Uh, next year, I would like to be at 10,000 uh, at some point during the college football season. But hey, you guys know, we keep this thing going even through the offseason. I, I change up the schedule a little bit because there's not as much going on. But yeah, I, uh, I would really appreciate you going ahead and, and subscribing. Uh, if you want to know when we go live, well, there's a schedule at the top of the uh, YouTube page. But also, uh, we try and do this Sundays at 11 a.m. Eastern. And then Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern. So try and be back here for that. Of course, we did not make it on Wednesday. A lot of things going on. A lot of things going on in the background. All right. We have got to dive in. We got to get into this. Let's go on and get to the games. We're not going to waste any more time. And we are going to start with... Da, 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 write the times down. East Carolina at Cincinnati. The Bearcats are a four and a half point favorite total of 52 and a half. This one is on Friday. It's 8 p.m. Eastern time. It's going to be on ESPN2. And we'll go ahead and pull up the numbers here while I tell you what the trends are. ECU is 0 and 6 against the spread their last six in Cincinnati. They are 3 and 9 against the spread their last 12 against the Bearcats. East Carolina is 5 and 1 against the spread their last six on the road against winning teams. Cincinnati is 4 and 1 against the spread at home against a winning team. So this, all the trends kind of seem to go right in, right in line here, both of them going head-to-head -head on this. Uh, I, I look at this, and I, I can't get out of my head the fact that Cincinnati throws the ball 56% of the time, uh, the number 31 there, um, and they have a passing success rate of number 26 uh, in the country. E ECU is number 123 in passing success rate. So it, there's there's a bit of a problem there. Um, I, I'm, I'm super curious about the uh, rushing aspect of it. Cincinnati doesn't run the ball a whole lot. Well, it's because they're not very good at it, right? Um, they're number 103 in passing success rate. So I I look at this, and I'm I'm just not super sold on, on Cincinnati as far as being able to run the football, but I think they have an advantage over ECU's defense as far as the passing defense is concerned. These numbers on the screen are, are over the last five weeks, so I've got the most recent data that uh that tends to be where these games are won and lost. I I look at what ECU does. Uh, the offense is pretty good, but I think that Cincinnati has a good enough pass defense to be able to stop them. You look at certain things like points per scoring opportunity, ECU's number 84 on offense. Uh, Cincinnati is number 81 on defense. And then you go and you look at uh, Cincinnati, you know, number 73 in points per scoring opportunity on offense, and ECU number 71. Uh, there's no advantage to who is actually going to be able to finish drives here. I'm going to ride with Cincinnati at home. It uh, seems like a lot of love coming in on ECU this week. I tend to believe that Cincy, even with the number 125 penalties per game, 
mark there uh, while ECU is number nine in that metric. Cincinnati at home seems to have uh, a little bit of different juice on it, especially on a weeknight home game, short week for East Carolina, etc. I like Cincinnati to uh, to be able to handle this here. Give me the Bearcats to cover four and a half on Friday night. Moving along, we've got Rutgers at Michigan State. And Michigan State, a nine and a half point favorite, total of 41 and a half over at BetUS. Uh, 12 p.m. Eastern Time, Saturday on the Big Ten Network. So let's go ahead and ring this one up on the screen as I'm getting the trends together. Uh, the road team in this matchup is 5-0 and against the spread in the last five meetings. That would be Rutgers in this spot. Rutgers is 5-1 and against the spread against the team with a losing record in the last six. Michigan State, they are 8-2-2 two and two against the number in their last 12 at home. Um, uh, there's no... We saw what Michigan State did last week, right? They went to Illinois. They handled that game. They did what they needed to do. These numbers are based on the last five weeks, of course. And you look at this, and it is just difficult to find exactly what Michigan State does well on offense. Um, Maybe you could say that their passing explosiveness is something to pay attention to. They're number 57 in that metric. But Rutgers' defense stops the big plays on offense. They are number 49 in rushing explosiveness allowed, but they're number 7 in passing explosiveness. They have figured out something with their secondary, and they're pretty good at it. They're not great at causing havoc, but they are are good against the pass. Uh, With that, you look at what Michigan State does on offense, and their rushing game is putrid. Uh, Just, there's there's no advantage for Michigan State running the football here. When you go over and you start to look at You know, Michigan State's defense against Rutgers' offense. Well, Michigan State's defense is not good, but the Rutgers' offense is, I mean, catastrophically bad. Number 128 PPA per rush, number 116 PPA per pass. The success rate on both of those, rushing success number 123, passing success number 124. There's no real metric that you can find to where Rutgers can take advantage of the Michigan State defense, even as bad as it is. With that said, this total sits at 41.5. I mean, you would almost have to certainly lean to an under here. Um, but with with both offenses being not good and both defenses being, eh, all right, I guess, like the Rutgers defense at least is decent, I I would have to lean Rutgers plus the 9.5 here. Uh, you start to look at some of these fundamental stats. A turnover margin, neither is great on this. Penalties per game, like Michigan State certainly has the upper hand in, in both of these turnovers and in penalties per game, but I, I don't trust them. I don't trust them for any of it. So uh, I do think Michigan State will eventually get things figured out, but I, I will take Rutgers to cover the 9.5. This feels low-scoring slog of a game. Uh, give me give me the Scarlet Knights to cover 9.5. Next on the board, Liberty at UConn. That's right. Uh, and we just got news, of course, that Day Day Hunter will be out uh, for the rest of the season. It looks like he's going to be out for like six months. Uh, just a strange injury that he's got. I think it's an LCL tear or LCL, whatever it is. Uh, we hope for a speedy recovery because he is a dynamic playmaker. But UConn is a 14.5 point home dog. The total sits at 45 at 12 p.m. Eastern time on CBS Sports Network on Saturday. This is uh, This is interesting. Very interesting here. Let's go on and and pull up the numbers here uh, so that we can get into the actual stats. Uh, My numbers all week have liked UConn in this game. And this, of course, is the stats over the last five weeks. Uh, Liberty defense has has really stood up and done some pretty amazing things here. Liberty is 16-5 against the spread after a straight-up win in their last 21. UConn is 5 and 1 against the spread in their last 6 at home. They are 6 and 0 oh against the spread in their last 6 overall. The number on this, uh, that total being 45 with a spread of 14 and a half. You're looking at a team total for UConn of around 15 and a half and you're looking at a team total for Liberty around 29 and a half. And when I look at these numbers, um I am a little less convinced that Liberty will be able to just blow right through these guys right they they are this is a perfect letdown spot maybe the biggest win that they've had uh in program history with the win at Arkansas last week you know first win over an SEC team etc but now you lose your your big playmaker running back the defense like I said has been really really good 
But you look at that rushing explosiveness metric, number 106 for that Liberty defense. While they are really good as far as success rate, number 13, and PPA per rush, number 26, that UConn offense loves to run the football. They run it 65% of the time. Liberty only defends it 44% of the time. And number 13 PPA per rush for UConn's offense, number 13 in rushing explosiveness. Uh, they are really good as far as offensive line yards and stuff rate. I know the Liberty defense has been great over the last five weeks, but UConn can really put some pressure on them. UConn's not going to throw the football. They only throw it like 33% of the time right now. Uh, you look at Liberty on offense, there's nothing that really stands out here. Uh, passing success rate is number 62. Rushing success, number 45. They're they're just good, right? It's, it's just a fairly efficient offense. They're not uh, great as far as running the ball. Jonathan Bennett has been a... Uh, it's a great surprise for this bunch. Uh, but in a game like this where you've got the letdown and this has turned into a really, really big game for UConn because they are trying to get bowl eligible, I I have to roll UConn plus the 14 and a half here. I think it's going to be a little bit lower scoring. My number is 44.84. I, I mean, it's right on the number 45. I would have to take an under here. Um, but I think that UConn can keep this thing close because I think they can keep the ball away from Liberty. So I would expect them to do that. Give me UConn plus the 14 and a half here. Next game up. Notre Dame at uh, Navy. And and it's not it's not at, I guess. I mean, it's you know, it's in Baltimore. Like so this one's on ABC. It's a 12 p.m. Eastern time game. Um weird, weird spot. Weird spot. Let's go in and pull it up on the screen and then I'll read off the trends here. Uh, Notre Dame is a 15 and a half point favorite as it sits currently. Uh, and I've got Notre Dame by 15.72 uh, over the last uh, five weeks. These are the numbers are from the last five weeks that I'm going to talk about here on the screen. Notre Dame five and two against the spread, their last seven at Navy. Um, Notre Dame 10 and two against the spread, their last 12 after a straight up win. They are 14, two and one against the spread, their last 17 in November. Notre Dame develops and gets better at the end of the year. They've done it. Over and over and over again. Navy 5-0 and against the spread against uh, teams with a winning record. Certainly plays in their favor. And Navy, as well, also develops. They are 22-8 and in their last 30 uh, against the number in November. So this is also a team that may not be all that good at the beginning of the year, but they certainly round into form by the end of the football season. So let's dive into some numbers here. Let's talk about this. Um, Notre Dame... The offense does not throw the football. Over the past five weeks, they have thrown the ball 17.42% of the time. Um, it's just not, it, it's crazy. Uh, their rush rate is 81, a little over 81%, almost 82%. This is this is kind of crazy. Uh, when you think about the, the split here, I, <laughs> I'm looking at the wrong numbers. That's Navy. That's Navy. Let's look at Notre Dame's offense. Excuse me. Notre Dame's offense throws it 34.8% of the time. That It's still still low, but not that crazy. Uh, the, the beauties of having to record all of this at one time for a podcast, right? Notre Dame's offense, um, number 124 as far as passing rate, number 8 as far as rushing rate, they are pretty good. Um, they're not explosive running the ball, but number 22 in rushing success rate, uh, number 26 in offensive line yards, number 17 in stuff rate allowed. Like, yeah, this bunch is pretty good. Number 21 in standard down success. As long as they can stay ahead of the chains, this is a really good offense. They do not throw it well. They do not throw it often. I don't blame them. But that is the weakness of the Navy defense. Navy is number 129 in PPA per pass, number 117 in passing success rate. Notre Dame, number 83 in offensive passing success rate. So, yeah, it's uh, it's a little bit different here. Uh, as far as the Navy defense, number 20 in rushing success rate allowed, number 14 in offensive line yards allowed, number 16 in stuff rate allowed, uh, or in stuff rate for their defense. They are, this is a good, good front seven for Navy as far as the defensive side. Now on offense, Navy, number 18 PPA per rush over the last five weeks. Uh, they are number 17 in rushing explosiveness. Notre Dame is number 102 in that metric. There are... There are definitely ways that you could see Notre Dame um, running away with this thing, but this is a massive letdown spot. And I know that my number is basically right on it with Notre Dame minus 15.7. But I'm going to go ahead and tell you, 
because this is such a letdown spot. Anything over two touchdowns, I would probably take Navy uh, to cover the 15 and a half here. Uh, this is another one of those where the total is 39 and a half, and Notre Dame is favored by 15 and a half. Uh, in spots like that, you're looking at a team total for Navy around 12 and a team total for Notre Dame around 27 and a half. Um, that is, you don't normally see a lot of margin when you have such a low total. So I would bank on Navy being able to put up, you know, maybe a couple of touchdowns here. And, you know, Notre, if Notre Dame wins this 27 to 14, they don't cover, right? That's still a massive win, you know, a, a good dominant win for them. But, yeah, I could certainly see Navy doing it, even if it is just a, a backdoor late in the ballgame. So I will take I will take Navy plus 15 and a half on this one. Let's go ahead and hit a quick ad on the backside. We're talking Missouri, Tennessee, Louisville, Clemson, etc. Let's check out some things you should know about. College football is back, and BetUS TV has you covered. Every Tuesday and Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern, we've got expert game analysis to help you make informed decisions before kickoff, only on the BetUS TV College Football Channel. Visit winningcureseverything.com to find everything you need to know about us, including full shows in video or podcast form, gambling picks, merch, the gear we use, and more. If you want more content from me, Gary, visit BetUSTV.com. I host the How to Gamble on Sports Show and, from August through January, the BetUS College Football Show. You can subscribe to both on YouTube. If you haven't already, subscribe to the podcast on Apple, Spotify, or whatever's your favorite podcast app. And if your app allows it, leave a five-star written review. Visit the Winning Cures Everything web store to get all kinds of football shirts, hats, hoodies, mugs, and more. Visit winningcureseverything.com slash store to see what all we've added. And now, back to the show. All right. Let's look at the next game on the day. Well, let me go on and tell you this. Enter in the picks contest over at winningcureseverything.com. The winner each week gets a $25 Amazon gift card. Uh, I've tried to get in touch with people using the email that they signed up with. Some people have not claimed their gift card. So if you have one a week, tell me which week and uh, and email me, <laughs> Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or just reach out on Twitter at GaryWCE. Uh, either way. We can get that done. The Valtimary Surf Company, fantastic clothing line. You need to go and check them out. They do college town t-shirts, and it's all based on uh, surf life, basically. And it's really good designs. The material is super comfortable. I highly recommend these guys. Sign up, not sign up, but go and check out ValtimarySurfCo.com. There's a link in the description. You can use the promo code GARY10 to get 10% off of your order. Again, I highly recommend it. I've got two of their shirts. They are super comfortable. And, uh, and really, really cool to wear. So great designs, great fabric, great material. Awesome, awesome company with good dudes. All right, moving along. Let's hit on Missouri at Tennessee. Missouri is 2-5 and five against the spread, their last seven against Tennessee. Uh, Tennessee is a 20-and-a-half point favorite, uh, maybe 20 at some places, but 20-and-a-half at Bet U.S., total of 57 on this. It's 12 p.m. Eastern time on CBS. Let's dive into the into the numbers here. We'll talk about some trends here momentarily. Uh, my numbers have Tennessee by 23.29 on this. Missouri is 7-3 and three against the spread. Their last 10 against SEC competition, they are 4-1 and one against the spread in their last five road games. Uh, criminally underrated team most of the time, right? Tennessee, 6-1 and one against the spread in their last seven after a straight-up loss. They are 5-1 and one against the spread in their last six at home. So this is something to pay attention to for sure. I, I look at these numbers, and obviously Tennessee did not look great last week against Georgia. These numbers that are on your screen are from the last five weeks. They're really good running the football. They don't do it uh, a ton, but uh, I say they don't do it a ton. They run it 53% of the time. I mean, they're, they do it quite a bit. Uh, but when you look at it, they are much better as far as their success rate running the ball, et cetera, than when they pass the ball. They are number 29 in PPA per pass. Um, they're number 60 in passing explosiveness, but they're number 91 in passing success rate. So it's kind of a boom or bust situation for them when they throw the football. Uh, Missouri's defense, number 41 PPA per pass, number 19 in pass success rate. 
uh, but their passing explosiveness is number uh, 100. I look at this, and I think that where Missouri gets most of their success on passing defense is from havoc rate. They are number nine in causing havoc. Tennessee's offense is number three in havoc allowed, so I don't know that they're going to have as much success with that. Tennessee does not get into third and fourth downs a whole lot. There's not a, a huge rate for it. They are number 130 as far as their passing downs rate. They stay ahead of the chains uh, because they are super creative on first and second down. They almost never get into that spot. When you look at what they actually do as far as standard down PPA, uh, that's first and second downs, you know, short yardage, third, whatever it is, um, they are number three. In standard downs PPA, they're number 11 in standard down success rate. Um, this is a, it's just a good offense, to be completely honest. And I know Missouri's got a really good defense, but you look on the other side and where, um, where Missouri's offense is bad, like at least Tennessee's defense is good against the run. And I don't, that's what Missouri does the most. I mean, they run the ball 56% of the time even though they've got a number 118 rushing success rate and uh, the number 120 PPA per rush offense in the country. Uh, they're not great throwing the ball either. I, I would, I don't know how Missouri really stays in the ball game here, and we know that Tennessee needs to win big in order to stay in this playoff race now that they've got a loss and probably will not be going to Atlanta for the SEC championship game. So I will, uh, I will take Tennessee here to cover the 20 or 20 and a half, whatever it may be, uh, because I think that, you know, we saw what Tennessee did to Missouri last year with this Heupel offense. I mean, I don't know if Heupel has something against Missouri uh, with the way that things went there, but he he took it out on last year, and it was more from running the football than it was from throwing it. So that just something to watch for this one because they, they smoked them in Columbia last year. Um, I think Tennessee handles this one pretty easily. So give me give me the Vols minus 20 and a half. All right. Next up, Louisville at Clemson. This is an interesting one. Uh, Louisville heads to Death Valley, number two, uh, whatever it may be. Uh, Clemson is a seven-point favorite here. The total sits at 51.5, numbers at BetUS. And we'll pull up the uh, the stats here so that you can see what we're looking at. These numbers are over the last five weeks. Louisville has really come on strong here lately. Um, but let's look at some trends. Louisville is 0-5 against the spread in their last five against Clemson. Uh, Louisville is 4-0 against the spread in their last four overall. They are 4-1 against the spread in their last five against winning teams. Clemson, 7-2 against the spread in their last nine against the ACC. However, this team at home almost always is overvalued. They are now 3-9 against the spread in their last 12 at home. So, uh, just because they are at home does not necessarily mean that uh, they are a shoe-in to be able to cover that spread. Again, they're favored by seven here. Let's uh, let's take a look at what the actual numbers show us. Uh, the Louisville defense has played just lights out over the past five weeks. Just unreal. Number one in PPA per rush, number eight in rushing success rate. And then over on the passing side with their secondary uh, in the back seven, uh, they're, only, they're defending the pass 50% of the time. Um, they're number 25 in PPA per pass. They are number 53 in passing explosiveness allowed. They're number 66 in passing success rate, but Clemson is number 117 in that spot on offense. Havoc rate? Louisville causes havoc uh, number 17 in the country. Uh, Clemson's offensive line is, is number 44 at stopping it, but, it, I mean, this is just insane what Louisville has turned into on defense. Uh Normally, I would say that Clemson would have an advantage as far as the running game is concerned, but they certainly didn't show it against Notre Dame last week, and Louisville's numbers are better than what Notre Dame's were. You look at what Louisville's doing on offense. Obviously, they can throw the football because, you know, Malik Cunningham, really awesome. Um, but they don't throw it often. They're, they only throw the ball about 42% of the time. They're number 20 in PPA per pass. Uh, passing success rate is number 40. Passing explosiveness is number 30. Uh, Clemson's defense over the last five weeks has certainly gotten better against the pass. They're number four in PPA per pass, number 14 passing success rate allowed. I I look at this, the first thing that I notice uh, is points per scoring opportunity. Clemson's defense is number 18 as far as points allowed per scoring opportunity. Louisville's offense is number 60. On the other side, Clemson's offense over the last five weeks 
is number 112 in points per scoring opportunity. That's uh, drives inside the 40. Louisville's defense is number one in that spot. I know that the trends say that Louisville has not covered in five straight against Clemson. And I understand that Clemson, uh, this is a buyback spot because they look so putrid against Notre Dame, etc. But these numbers lead me to where I have to go with Louisville on this. I have to take the Cardinals plus the seven because they are playing uh, about as well as any team in the ACC, if not, you know, a, a, an average top 25 team at this point. I, they didn't look good at the beginning of the year. That doesn't mean that a team cannot develop and turn into a good team by the end of the season. Scott Satterfield is doing an incredible coaching job here. Give me the Cardinals plus the seven. I, I think this is a pretty good football team. Um, Clemson, I you know, I've got some numbers that, that do like Clemson as far as full season stats are concerned. But when you look at the, the most recent numbers, yikes. Like, Clemson's got to figure something out here because uh, they, they looked bad last week. If they go off script this week, it's going to get ugly, I would imagine. Wisconsin at Iowa. Now, this one is a tricky, tricky ball game. Uh, it's going to be in Kinnick Stadium, obviously. We'll go on and pull up the stats here. Uh, but Iowa is a one-and-a-half-point dog at home. 34 and a half is the total. Latest numbers at Big US. It's 3:30 p.m. Eastern Time on FS1. Wisconsin 5 and 1 straight up, 4 and 2 against the spread in their last 6 against Iowa. Uh, two teams that play very similarly. When you when you really think about it. Wisconsin 1 and 4 against the spread their last 5 on the road. They are 2 and 5 against the number against a team with a winning record. Iowa 5 and 2 against the spread in their last 7 overall. However, they are 2 and 5 against the spread in their last 7 at home. Now, I have to look at, at what is going on here. This Wisconsin defense has started to round into shape under Jim Leonard. They're doing a pretty pretty good job. Uh, every, there's no advantage for Iowa's offense here. Like, uh, none whatsoever. On the other side, you might be able to convince me that Wisconsin has a, a bit of an advantage as far as running the football against Iowa. Uh, they, they run the ball nearly 60% of the time over the past five weeks. And Iowa, in that time span, is number 88 in rushing success rate allowed. Uh, Iowa's offense, excuse me, Wisconsin's offense is number 51 in that spot. You start looking at, like, points per scoring opportunities, stuff like that. Uh, yeah, Iowa, it, it, they they are not going to be able to finish drives here. And when it comes down to that, like, it, these two, as far as tumor, uh, turnover margin, very similar. Um, but you look at, like, PPA margin, et cetera especially over the last five weeks, Wisconsin uh, significantly better. Number 13 in PPA margin, Iowa number 32. Over the past five weeks, my numbers have Wisconsin favored by 8.7. They're only having to give up one and a half. Yeah, give me the Badgers. Give me the Badgers. I I, I think that this is a good spot for them. Um, they haven't looked great every week. I think this is one of those spots, you know, Big Ten West game, et cetera. I think that this is one of them where they are able to get the win. So, yeah, give me Wisconsin to cover one and a half on this one. Now, Nebraska at Michigan. Now, this is an interesting one because the number is massive. Casey Thompson not going to play in this one. Um, just the, the, the typical stuff, right? Michigan favored by 31 in this spot. Total is at 49. It's 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time on ABC. Of course it is because it's massive brands. This was a three-point game last year. I think it was 32-29 Michigan. Don't think you're going to get that this year. Uh, the total at 49 is is a little bit surprising um, because, I mean, you were talking about at basically like a 39-10 to 10 game here. Um, just to <laughs> some somewhere around there, right? Uh, 30... 39 to 10 or 40 to 9 or whatever it may be. Uh, just just crazy to think about. And looking at the numbers, here we're going to pull them up on the uh, on the screen before I read off the trends here. And so I've got Michigan by 37.21 on this, which is certainly covering the spread. Uh, Nebraska 3-0-1 against the spread on the road against the team with a winning record in the last four. They are 3-7 and against the spread in their last 10 overall. Uh, Mickey Joseph's bunch, yeah, just just rough. Uh, Michigan 9-2 and two against the spread. Their last 11 against the Big Ten. That's not bad. They are 4-0 and oh against the spread at home against losing teams. So, 
I, I don't know what to tell you here. Uh, Michigan does a lot of things really well. They run the ball 61% of the time. At Nebraska, there is a big split here because they are not great against the run, to be completely honest. Yeah, we, we can look at the numbers, but like teams run the ball nearly 57% of the time against them. There's a reason for that. Um, I I expect... Michigan to hold on to the football or to the football for a very very long time in this one, and, and the reason for that is this: you look at Standard Downs PPA, just right here, Michigan number thirty four in Standard Downs PPA, Nebraska number one hundred. Uh, the PPA is predicted points added, by the way. Uh, Standard Downs success rate, that's the easiest one to look at as far as efficiency goes. Number twelve for Michigan on offense, number one hundred nine, and this is on like first and second down. It's staying ahead of the chains. I I look at this, and I see what Nebraska brings to the table on offense now, especially with Casey Thompson being gone. Against that Michigan defense, I don't know that they're going to be able to score. I, I just I, I don't see a path for Nebraska to be able to get the win here. And and for that, like I, I know that Harbaugh likes to uh, beat up on teams that he can, right? Because he doesn't let his second or third stringers um, – let up. It, they they play hard until the final whistle, and it doesn't matter what the score is. They just keep rolling. I, I'm going to take Michigan to cover 31. Like I just I don't see a path for Nebraska here to keep this game even within you know four touchdowns. It this this is a bad bad spot, especially without your starting quarterback. Uh, yeah, give me give me Michigan at home here. I think they roll this thing up. I think it's good. All right, let's hit this. And on the backside, we're hitting Kansas State, Baylor, Texas A&M, and Auburn. Yeesh. North Carolina, Wake Forest, and Arizona at UCLA. Let's check out some things you should know about. Follow the show on Twitter at Winning Cures. And you can follow Gary at Gary WCE. You can also follow on Facebook. Got your own podcast or web show? Looking to start one? Or you're just curious how we look and sound so good? Well, we've got all the gear that we use listed on our gear page on the website. And if you order using our links, you'll be supporting the show, too. Subscribe on YouTube to get not only full Winning Cures Everything shows, but individual segments and other goodies as well. We're over 6,000 subscribers, and our goal by the end of the year is 7,500. If you're interested in advertising on a show that reaches over 80,000 unique football fans per month during the season, send an email to Gary at winningcureseverything.com and we'll put together a plan that best fits you or your business. And now, back to the show. All right. Uh, don't forget, again, enter the picks contest over at winningcureseverything.com. The winner gets a $25 Amazon gift card. So, Take advantage of that while you can. There's also going to be links on my Twitter page, at GaryWCE, so go and check it out. Kansas State heads to Baylor, and I, I'm going to tell you, Baylor being a two-and-a-half-point favorite kind of surprised me a little bit. I know they've played well. I know they won, like, what, three in a row? Uh, but Baylor, by two-and-a-half here. Uh, the total sits at 53 at 7 p.m. Eastern time on FS1. Let's pull it up on the screen. I got Kansas State favored. I, I was I was a little shocked. Um, the road team in this matchup is six and zero oh against the spread uh, in the last six. Kansas State thirty six thirteen and two the last fifty one after a straight up loss. They certainly bounced back well, uh, but they are one four and two against the number on the road against the team with the winning record. Uh, Baylor, I mean Dave Aranda is just fantastic. Uh, Nine and two against the spread their last eleven at home. They are 16 and 6 against the spread in their last 22 games overall. Let's look at the numbers. Let's see what the numbers tell us. Baylor's offense, uh, they're okay passing the ball. They're not super explosive, number 86 as far as passing explosiveness, but they don't allow havoc, number 22 in that rate. They're number 9 in passing success rate. They're number 17 in PPA per pass. The Kansas State defense is okay. Not great at causing havoc. They're number 103. Um, the the thing that Baylor likes to do the most is run the football, right? Number 13 in that spot there. It's over over 61%, uh, getting closer to 62 there. Uh, when you look at at Kansas State's defense, they are, they are pretty good as far as standard down PPA and standard down success rate. 
if they can stay ahead of the chains over Baylor, they can do some really fun things here. They If they can get stops, I think that's the easiest way to put it, which is so cliche, typical, whatever you want to call it. It may just the, the normal stuff. I, I think Kansas State's defense can have success here because I don't think that Baylor trusts Blake Shapin to be able to throw the ball down the field or I guess maybe his decision. I don't know exactly what it is, why they don't want to throw the football, uh, even though the numbers over the past five weeks have been pretty good, as you can see here. The Baylor defense, Kansas State with uh, – with Will Howard in the ballgame has been pretty good. And even with Adrian Martinez, they are throwing it a little bit more than they were at the beginning of the season. The Kansas State rushing numbers are not great, right? Rushing success rate, uh, number 105 over the past five weeks. Number 106 in PPA per rush. Uh, but they are still, you know, pretty explosive. Number 67 in that spot. The Baylor defense is number 80. Baylor's defense is number 107 in rushing success rate allowed and number 93 in PPA per rush. There is a distinct advantage for Kansas State in this spot. Not only with that, but when they do have to throw the football, they're number four in PPA per pass. They are number two in passing explosiveness, which, by the way, Baylor is number 103 in that. Baylor allows big plays. They just do. And by allowing those big plays, you got guys like you know Deuce Vaughn and uh, Adrian Martinez, etc., on the other side. I think they will be able to take advantage of them and – that's why I was surprised that they were they were and I guess I shouldn't be because they're at home. But Kansas State looks like the clear side here. I know everybody wants to talk about Adrian Martinez, but you know I'll, uh, the fumble that he had uh, against Texas, etc. But you look at their overall turnover margin numbers: number thirteen in giveaways per game. Uh, their number that's number seventy eight uh, for Baylor as far as giveaways per game. Like this is a spot that I really feel strongly about Kansas State in. I might I might put a little pizza money on this, but uh, but Kansas State is the side that I am going to take here. Uh, I like Baylor and I like Dave Aranda and what they're doing, but this just looks like a a mismatch to me as far as what these teams do well. Uh, give me Chris Kleiman of the bunch. I, I like Kansas State plus two and a half. I think they can win the game outright, uh, or not can win. I think they will win the game outright just based on what I'm looking at. So yeah, give me Kansas State plus two and a half on this one. Moving along. To the SEC. And let's see. Write my times down. Texas A&M heads to the Plains to take on Auburn. Auburn, a one and a half point favorite. Total of 48 and a half latest numbers at BetUS. Let's pull it up on the screen, and then I will get into the trend lines here. The road team in this matchup is 8 and 2 against the spread in the last 10. That would favor Texas A&M here. A&M is 7 and 0. Oh against the spread on the road against a losing home team, and they are 11-23 and 23 against the spread in their last 34 November games. So that certainly doesn't look good. They're 1-3-1 one, and one against the spread in their last five overall. Auburn, 19-7 and seven against the spread against losing teams. Uh, they are 4-10 and 10 against the spread in their last 14 overall. They are 1-6 against the number in their last seven home games. So all those trends are well and good and whatever. But let's look at the actual stats here. Auburn uh, has slowed down a little bit as far as their explosive, uh, explosive passing and explosive rush rate and all that kind of mess, right? But just a touch. The offense is very much boomer bust. Like, you look at the success rates, uh, number 86 in rushing success rate, but number 5 in rushing explosiveness. Like, they're number 24 in PPA per rush. You look at the passing. Number 111 PPA per pass, number 74 in passing success rate, but the number 31 in passing explosiveness. It is, they don't hit any of the efficient passes, but they are able to hit some some deep downfield throws with Robbie Ashford. That Texas A&M defense, man, people are running on them at 65% of the time. It's number 131. They are being run on more than any team in the FBS over the past five weeks. They're number 44 in rushing success rate, but they're number 118 in rushing explosiveness allowed. Tank Bigsby, Robbie Ashford are going to have a lot of fun running the ball on these guys. Um, they're not going to be able to throw it much on a and I don't believe. Uh, now, the passing explosiveness for a and defense is number 121, but as far as just overall stuff, uh, number 48 uh, PPA per pass, number 43 passing success. And let's move to offense. Auburn is not good at stopping the run. 
A&M is not running the ball very much over the past five weeks. Part of that might be the fact that they have been down multiple times. Connor Wigman is supposed to be back in this game. Uh, he, I believe, is their best option at quarterback. Uh, it looks like all those guys that had the flu and whatnot last week for the Florida game, they're going to be back. Um, but you look at you know rushing explosiveness, all this, I, I think A-Chain is better than these numbers. So I think that they're still going to have a bit of an advantage over an Auburn defense that's number 121 in PPA per rush, number 126 in rushing success rate, number 86 in rushing explosiveness uh, allowed, number 110 in offensive line yards allowed, and they're only number 108 in stuff rate. Like, they're not good on standard downs. Um, A&M is at least serviceable on standard downs. I, I think I think you're going to be able to have some success here. Uh, as far as scoring opportunities per game and points per scoring opportunity, A&M has gotten better at that. Number 48 in points per scoring opportunity against number 125 for that Auburn defense. If you get into scoring range on Auburn, you're going to put up points. Uh, on the other side, you know, a points per scoring opportunity for uh, A&M, number 86. But they only give up 6.75 scoring opportunities per game. Auburn only gets to uh, the 40-yard line of the opponent, like 90, or they're number 92. It's only 4.75 uh, per game. So, while Auburn is number 40 in points per scoring opportunity, they don't have as many. Just something to pay attention to here. I, I've got Texas A&M favored by five in this spot. Yeah, I'm going to have to go with A&M. Yeah, I'm, I know it's on the road, and I know that uh, all that, which does favor the, the road team in this matchup here, but I, I think I like A&M to be able to get this win here. Uh, I, I like what Carnell Williams did with the game plan and whatnot against Mississippi State last week, especially coming back from a 24-3 deficit early in that game. But, uh, but I think this is a different beast. Uh, I'm going to take A&M plus the one and a half. I think they win the game outright in Auburn. Um, I don't think it means that anything is fixed in College Station for sure. But, uh, but I do like them there. Got a nose itch on this. I swear, I saw Josh Pate do this the other night, and uh, I was like, yeah, okay, good. It's not just me. Like it, it is, I don't know. It's been awful, awful this year. We got two more games to hit, so let's go on and do it. North Carolina at Wake Forest. Wake Forest, a three-and-a-half-point favorite. Total sits at 78. Pointsy. Pointsy. 7.30 p.m. Eastern time on ESPN2. Let's pull up the numbers, and I'll give you the trends Trends on this one. Favorite is 5-2 and two against the spread of the last seven. The home team is 7-1 and one, uh, against the spread in the last eight. That all certainly points towards Wake Forest. North Carolina 4-0 and oh against the spread after a spread loss in their last four in that position. Wake Forest 5-1 and one against the spread after a spread loss. Of course, that one was last week against North Carolina State, but regardless... Uh, they are 1-4 and four against the spread at home against a team with a winning road record. North Carolina, no, the defense is not good. When, you, can, you can see it on the on the screen here, of course. I'll, I'll go on and go through these stats. I've got North Carolina favored by 2.5 points here, uh, just based on the last five weeks of stats. But uh, but the defense is not good. Uh, PPA per rush, rushing success rate, I mean, number they're, they're in the 117, 127 mark on those. They don't allow explosive rush plays. Uh, but that I don't think that's going to hurt them very much because Wake Forest is only running the ball 40% of the time, and they're not good at doing it. Number 101 in PPA per rush. Number 118 in rushing explosiveness. They're number 98 in stuff rate allowed. Uh, yeah, I don't think you're going to have to worry too much there. When you look at the other side of the ball with Sam Hartman throwing the ball, that's where it gets tricky, right? Um Number 36 in PPA per pass, number 7 in passing success rate, and both of those big advantages over this North Carolina defense, which is number 80 in PPA per pass allowed, and number 85 in passing success rate allowed. You look at what North Carolina is doing on offense over the last five weeks, and they are uh, just crazy, crazy good. Number 33 rushing success rate, not only number 86 in PPA per rush, but a lot of that's because they're scoring offensive touchdowns as far as passing the ball. Uh, Number 15 in PPA per pass, number 2 in passing success rate. Drake May, and this is going to be a fun quarterback duel to see who can actually outdo the other one. Uh, this Wake defense is average, just average. And when you've got a really explosive offense uh, like North Carolina has uh, that can really just get whatever yards they want, they can drive on you whenever they want. I mean, North Carolina is getting seven scoring opportunities per game. That That's seven drives. That's what they average over the last five weeks. 
seven drives inside the opponent 40-yard line, uh, and they're number 16 in points per scoring opportunity. Yeah, I I think that they will be able to put up points here. Um, standard downs, PPA, et cetera. Like, North Carolina's offense is going to have success against Wake Forest defense. And now you got to pay attention to turnover rate, right? Because North Carolina is number 27 in giveaways per game. Wake Forest now all the way up to number 111 in giveaways per game. They don't generate a ton of turnovers. Uh, neither team really does. But when you look at this, like Wake Forest, I believe 11 turnovers in the last three games. Uh, maybe more. I know, no, no, it's more than that. I know it's more than that. Um, because they had eight against Louisville. Uh, and then they had three against uh, NC State. So, yeah, things are not going well in the turnover department. And I'm not sure what exactly is causing it. But it's, it's leading me to where I cannot bet on Wake Forest here. If I had to choose a certain way, which, again, if you want my official plays, you got to go over to the BetUS uh, College Football Channel. Uh, but if I had to choose a side here, I'm going to go with North Carolina. Um, as you saw, I mean, my numbers have North Carolina favored by 2.58 uh, just based on the last five weeks. Uh, overall on the season, my numbers have North Carolina favored by 1.87. And that's just, uh, you know, basic stats, raw stats. Uh, not opponent-adjusted whatever, just basic stats. And now that we've got a turnover issue... Uh, in Winston Salem, yeah, I'm I'm certainly going to lean towards Drake May and what that bunch is doing right now. Uh, they win this one, I think they win the Coastal, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah, give me give me North Carolina to cover or to uh, yeah to cover three and a half here uh, to get within three and a half. I think they win the game outright. So give me give me the Tar Heels on that. Arizona heads to UCLA. UCLA a 19 and a half point favorite. Total of 78, latest numbers at BetUS. 10.30 p.m. Eastern Time, this one's going to be on Fox. UCLA quietly just rolling along, doing their thing. We all know exactly what Chip Kelly is at this point, but he has got a, a pretty dominant football team. Uh, yeah, they had the, the hiccup in Eugene. That was against a really good Oregon team. I don't know that Arizona is really good. Let's look at the trends. Arizona 2-7-1 against the spread in their last 10 against UCLA. Uh, just there's been a talent disparity here. And even when UCLA was not very good, they still were able to handle Arizona. Arizona 4-1 and one against the spread their last five after a straight-up loss. They are 1-2 and two against the spread in their last three on the road. Uh, they haven't had to play a lot of road games thus far. Uh, UCLA 11-0 against the spread against a team with a losing record. I mean, that's a crazy stat, right? If it's, a, if it's not a good team, UCLA beats them to a pulp. Uh, they are 8-1 and one against the spread in their last nine against Pac-12 competition. The only one that they did not cover was in Eugene, Oregon earlier this year. So, let's take a look. Let's see what the numbers say. Uh, they're favored by 19.5. I've got them favored by 28.5 over the past five weeks looking at the numbers. This Arizona defense is maybe as bad as they get. Number 131, PPA per drive on defense. That is worst in the country over the last five weeks. Uh, now, the Arizona offense is pretty good, number 24 in offensive PPA per drive. But UCLA's offense, number one. Number one in PPA per drive. Now, the UCLA defense, pretty bad, number 118 uh, in PPA per drive. Now, if you just look at PPA per play, uh, that's where there's you know a, a little bit of an advantage. Uh, UCLA is number 97 in that spot. Arizona still number 131. They are dead last. Uh, they give up just... They're... They're number 129. Arizona is number 129 in passing success rate allowed on defense. They are number 131 in rushing success rate allowed. UCLA, they're going to give the ball to Zach Charbonnet. They're going to let DTR run. They, they've got a stable of backs behind Charbonnet that will also be able to run. They are awesome. Number five in offensive line yards, number three in rushing success rate, number one in PPA per rush. At, they run the ball like 54% of the time. They're They're really good at this. And Arizona's got nothing that can stop them. So, yeah, it's uh, it's a little bit of a problem. Points per scoring opportunity, Arizona number 120 on defense, and UCLA is number 10. Like, this is, this is a mismatch on that side of the ball. Now, you move to the other side, and yeah, it's a little bit of a mismatch for uh, UCLA and their defense as well. Arizona, uh, number two in PPA per rush, number one in rushing success rate, but they only run the ball 38% of the time. They're number 42 in PPA per pass, number 34 in passing success rate. Um, they throw the ball 61% of the time. The UCLA defense is not good against the run, but Arizona doesn't run the ball as much. So that's the biggest issue. The fact that Arizona wants to throw the ball, uh, maybe a little bit of 
maybe a bit of an advantage for UCLA is that they are number 76 in PPA per pass, right? So that, that's something to pay attention to. Uh, you look at scoring opportunities per game, uh, UCLA gives up quite a few of those. Uh, Arizona's number 31. Um, but when, when it comes down to points per scoring opportunity, that's where Arizona gets uh, caught up. They, they stop themselves sometimes. They are number 66 in points per scoring opportunity over the last five weeks. UCLA's defense is number 94 there. Uh, as far as offensive red zone conversion percentage, uh, Arizona is number 92 on the full season of red zone touchdown rate, 57%. That's number 92 in the country. Um, I, I think UCLA is going to have zero problems putting the ball in the end zone, and I think that Arizona will stop themselves enough to where I think that UCLA is going to be able to put up just a ton of points. And my, my total on this is way off, uh, which I'm working on my, my totals formula. Um, but it's got UCLA winning this like 40 to 11. I think it's probably going to be closer to, you know, at 49 to at 49 to 20, somewhere around there. Uh, so I, I, think, I think UCLA covers this. Uh, I think they... I know it is a bit of a look-ahead spot because UCLA and USC play next week, but this it, it, it don't take much. Like UCLA does not have to stress a lot as far as moving the football here. Yeah, give me UCLA to cover uh, the nineteen and a half here. So, so yeah, yeah, not bad. We get uh, we got through twelve games. Uh, oh, let me go on and give out my NFL picks. Okay, NFL Super Contest picks for NFL Week Eleven. These are my five spread picks that I put into the Super Contest every week. Uh, I don't do a lot of explanation, etc. I am 24-20 and 20 on the year. We don't count the pushes. Uh, I did go 4-0-1 oh, last week in the NFL. So here is what I've got. I've got the Lions plus 3 at the Bears. I've got the Chargers plus 7 at the 49ers. Give me the Jaguars plus 9.5 at the Chiefs. Saints at the Steelers. Give me the Steelers plus 2.5 here. Uh, Vikings plus four at the Bills. So I'm riding with five underdogs this week in the NFL. A lot to get into with uh, with the NFL stuff. So it's it's getting a little crazy. We're getting later in the year. Uh, this is, you know, midway point, a little more than the midway point. Uh, curious how that's all going to turn out. But you guys know, it's a college football show. That's what we do. All right, probably going to be doing a second show later this afternoon. So hopefully you are tuned in for that one. Uh, with that said... We're going to go ahead and get out of here. Uh, the show, powered by BetUS, always. It's America's premier online sports book. Check them out at, at uh, BetUS.com. That's where all the latest numbers came from that I, that I put on here. Along with that, of course, I host the BetUS College Football Show. It's every Tuesday and Wednesday, 1 p.m. Eastern time. Make sure that you are subscribed over there and that you join us for each show. We are excited about it. It's going to be a good time. Um, it's always a good time. Live chat's always uh, really where it's at. Uh, you guys handle that for sure. So make sure that you are subscribed there. Make sure you're subscribed here. Like the video for me if you would so kindly. Check out Valtimary Surf Company. Of course, there's a link in the description for all of this. So go and check all that stuff out. And make sure that you enter in the picks contest at winningcureseverything.com. All right. I think we're good to go. Looking at the notes. Looking at the notes. Uh, Oh, we're going to have a turkey day scavenger hunt over at BetUS. Go and check out the BetUS College Football Show. And there's links in the description for it. It is a fantastic new thing. I want you to check it out. It's really, really cool. So go and go and check that out. Uh, but that's it. I, we're going to get out of here with this. Uh, we, we kept it under an hour. Feeling pretty good about that. 12 games and some NFL picks in under an hour. It's not bad. Not bad at all. All right. You guys take care of yourself. Take care of each other. And hopefully all of your tickets cash this week. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. And make sure to leave a nice five-star review. You can follow Gary on Twitter, at GaryWCE. And the show is at Winning Cures. Be sure to check out the merch in our web store and share the show.